I'm Curtis Fleming with Fly Rod Chronicles. This week, we are down in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. We're gonna float the Shenandoah and the Potomac River in wild, wonderful West Virginia. That's pretty. We've got Joe Messenger joining us, a professional, a legend. You were wearing out those bluegills under that bridge, weren't you? You look damn good, too. He's sat there and watched me catch bluegills all day. What? A crappie? I've never caught a crappie on this river before. Isn't that something? A channel catfish. Oh, he's taking me the root. It's a catfish. It's no. Ch it's a channel cat. On, on the game changer. That's gorgeous. Oh, man. And then he comes and catches what he's supposed to catch. That's a pretty good fish, I think. I think there's a story out there about maybe like the old bull. There you go. <laughs> Look at this guy. I might have to sit down in for that. I mean, you just come in and take over, huh? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, Joe. Welcome to wild and wonderful West Virginia, huh? Traveling the world, fishing, enjoying the great outdoors. Those are things that would have seemed impossible to me when I was a kid growing up in the mountains of West Virginia. I'm a lucky man and I never want to forget it. And I'm hoping that sharing my experiences with folks will inspire them to do the same. I'm Curtis Fleming and these are my Fly Rod Chronicles. This place is where my father and mother used to bring me as a small child. And we used to camp on the banks of the Shenandoah and Potomac River. So this is like coming back home. It's got me excited and I haven't even started talking about the fishing. Fishing's good? Fishing's good, just got back. Just got back, it was a long day. Yeah. The last couple hours was top water. Nice. Right at twilight. Joe, you know what that means? We sleep in till noon. This is my kind of fishing. Oh man, we're gonna have fun. I'm looking forward to it. Our special guest this week is Joe Messenger. He's just a wealth of knowledge. And Joe's a character. He's got a story for everything. You make a back cast, you can eat a sandwich before the line straightens out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his father just got inducted into the Fly Fishing Hall of Fame. Dad <clears throat> had this old Hudson, but it's kind of like a stagecoach there, and he took the back seat out and put a fly tying bench in there and put a dome light over it and had screens in the windows, and, you know, they were camped right by the river where the light would attract the bugs. They'd land on it, and that's where he made these drawings. Nobody really had done this before yet. Mm -hmm. You know, the illustrations of stream insects. And... I've always known of Joe's father who invented the irresistible, and it's really one of my go-to uh, trout flies as a, as a dry fly search pattern. It's interesting that the flies he created, namely the frogs and Irresistible. They're unique in not only their design, the pattern, but in the method that he developed himself. Joe was 22 years old when his dad passed. Unfortunately, I wasn't around him that long. You know, he, he at least instilled in me some values that he had that I hope still remain with me. So I'm grateful for the time I had with him. He could take nothing and make something out of it. And that's maybe a lost art because he didn't have too much to work with. Your dad made this? He made the whole thing. Your right? dad made yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, made it for me when I was just a kid. Yeah. Curtis has yeah. problem making a reservation. Seriously. <laughs> for someone like me who wants to learn and wants to bring it to the viewers, we've got top notch. 
Then you take Brian Kelly and all of his services and all of his wealth of knowledge on the river. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Hey, stick around. We'll be right back with more Fly Rod Chronicles. Can't get enough of Fly Rod Chronicles? Check us out online. This segment is brought to you by Fly Rod Chronicles Signature Rods. You know, the last time we were here, um, we were here in peak summer months. Let's just fish, fish, fish. You know, fall is a wonderful time on the river. Um, you may not get the huge numbers that you do in pre-summer um, bite, like the 40, 50, 60 fish a day, but you're gonna get these fish that are podding minnows up, and they're typically the bigger fish that are feeding up for the fall. These fish are a lot like humans. They put on a little weight to get through the winter. He come after it. He come after He's it. He's gonna get it. There he is. <laughs> right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, he spit oh, me. He spit it. Dang on. He was a beast too. <laughs> Dude, he spit me right turned the boat. Well, that's the one that brings you back. That, exactly. That's what keeps you coming back. Being this close to Washington, D.C., people can do this two or Seriously. three times a year. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, yeah. <laughs> Son. Oh, look, I see side. See color. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's why they come down here to the Shenandoah River, isn't it? Look at him. Ah, oh. oh, yeah. Come up, hit that popper. Now he's trying to take me down to that stump. Don't lose him. He's being pretty. Oh, yeah. He's trying to spit me, isn't he? He's actually he's going to do pretty, it again. He's, I was going to say he's being pretty. He's not ready yet. Pretty cooperative, but. He's a chunker. He is Look a, at the color. Oh, uh, yeah. In the net. <laughs> Attaboy. Hey, hey, give me some. <laughs> give me some. All right. That's sweet. Look at that. You know, on this side, he's been picked on a little bit. He's been out scrapping a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Hadn't he? Nice. Yeah, he was, he, he was in it for the mill, wasn't he? Nice. Our special guest this week is Joe Messenger. Joe is a legend. Here's what I respect the most about Joe. It's not so much that he's trying to carry on his father's tradition of fly tying. Joe is trying to pass on to those next generations the history and the knowledge that he has of fly fishing. You know, that's what we do at Fly Rock Chronicles. There's some misconceptions about fly fishing that, that it's a rich man's sport. Um, that it uh, just takes too much time to learn anything about it and that you have to know every insect that's on the water and that's not true. There. Oh, oh yeah, a little rod bend here. Oh, that's your son's game changer. Yeah, man, Zach. look at that thing in his face. Oh, Zach, you the man. Mm. Woo. God, that's a pretty color. Look at the color on that fish. Man. All striped up, huh? bronzed. Good looking fish. Sweet. Come right out. Nice, Brian. That's a chunker. Kapunk, like a football. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Game changer. You want to take a look at that, J Rod? Yeah, let's see that, so, so that's the one Zach tied. Three segments to it. And they, hey, they swim. They look like a fish, right? Absolutely. Well, you know what? Sleeping in and coming out and fishing in the <laughs> evening is the way to do it. I love working afternoon shift. <laughs> That's Not awesome. too bad. Yeah. We're out and we're, we've got boiling fish all around us and he's catching catfish on a fly rod. Is it a muskie? What is it? It's not a, it a smallmouth. Oh, he's taking me to the root. It's a catfish. 
no. It's a channel cat. On, on the game changer. On the game changer. <laughs> Catfish on the game changer. <laughs> this is Cat Rod Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Welcome to wild and wonderful West Virginia. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Oh, man. Here, take a picture here. I'll give you this. That's awesome. Beautiful fish. Not a mark on them. A catfish on a fly. That goes in the memory bank forever. Channel catfish. Channel catfish. On the Shenandoah in West Virginia. That's pretty cool. We're going to release him, but that's a good eating fish right that's there. That's a good, yeah, you get a couple nice fillets off that. Yeah. Stick around. Fly Rod Chronicles will be right back. Closed captioning brought to you by Soft Science, Supreme Comfort Footwear. Welcome back to Fly Rod Chronicles. The variety of species on these two rivers, that's one thing that's cool about fishing this. I was hoping to come down here and catch a big smallmouth, a catfish on a fly. That goes in the memory bank forever. Never dreamt that I would catch a crappy. Oh, there we go. Something different. Is that crappy? That's a crappy. In 22 years, we have never caught a crappy fish in this river. Now, the old timers used to tell me this river was full of crappie. And they used to catch them by the bucket load. And they wonder why and they're not in the river anymore. It's Westervelt Ecological Services, time for conservation. And I think today with conservation and maybe selective harvest, rather than keeping a bucket, maybe take five or six home that you're gonna eat that night and let the other 20 or 30 go, I think we still would have had crappie in this river today. And, and maybe today's crappie is, is showing us that there's a sign that they're, they're coming back. Too many people get kind of concerned about, overly concerned about numbers. And I think there's a lot more to fly fishing or fishing in general than just numbers. Uh, maybe stop and take a look and see what's going on around you. Yeah. Just being on a river, is, uh, even if you're not catching a lot of fish. But if you get obsessed with that, uh, maybe you miss something. That's a good you know? point. It's a really good point. You know, floating down the historic Shenandoah and Potomac River near the confluence of, of, of Harper's Ferry, I just looked around and I would pinch myself. And I'd put the rod down and pull out my phone and just take pictures. This place is just loaded with history. See this iron ring here? Yeah. This is where the original Robert Harper's Ferry was. It actually never went into the town of Harper's Ferry and went straight across to Virginia and transported goods across to and from the north to the south. Really? Yep. And it was tied in right there. Tied in right here. And then after John, uh, after Robert Harper retired, that's when he moved to Harper's Ferry and established Harper's Ferry. We knew the water was going to be down, and I called Brian and said, I want to bring our, our water master. Within a couple minutes, you know, it's, it's ready to roll. And I'm going to head to the water. That's great. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Go out here and go for a little ride. And Nice hot day like this. I'm going. I'm going to go out and play. and riding high on the water was, you know, within a couple casts, had a really nice smallmouth bass. Ooh, there he 
is, baby. There he is. Oh, yeah. Got a little bronze back. Nice. I'm out in these water masters, I find something new. If you don't really like your guide, these things and take off. <laughs> you like that, Brian? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> or, you know, the guide, if he don't really like the clients, <laughs> can get in one of those and take off. <laughs> Fast current right here, Curtis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coming in hot, coming in hot. Big rock right here, gotta go up river. Oh, you gotta go up river? Up river. You, re good. you really think I gotta go up river? Yeah. Just a you really bit. do. <laughs> just a little bit I'm, more. I'm gonna correct you. <laughs> I don't really yeah. have to go up river. Oh gosh. <laughs> I need one of those in my boat. A hole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come back for more Fly Rod Chronicles right after this. Can't get enough of Fly Rod Chronicles? Check us out online. The husbands can come out and fly fish with us, and the wife has all kind of activities to do. She's shopping, antiquing, wineries, um, there's always festivals going on in the area, arts and crafts festivals, there's Shepherdstown, which is full of culture, and they just seems to really work out well. An hour down the road's Washington, D.C. An hour and 15 minutes down the road's Baltimore. Anybody can get here within a few hours of drive. They've turned off. I mean, they were, they were there just a minute ago. Let's, uh, let's take five. Let's go grab lunch. Joe, I'm getting hungry. Had enough for a while. I didn't, I didn't have any luck. You want to go out there and give it a try? Yeah. What do we got on? Uh, you got your got a frog. You got your frog there. I'm uh. Can I go get something to eat? I'll see what happens. Fly fishing could become a lost art, and that's what I respect about Joe Messenger. He didn't let it, and he spends all his free time trying to help not only kids, but people like me. And I just have so much respect for Joe. Hey, that's, that's a pretty good fish, I think. Big fish. I'm your net man. Ooh, this is a beast. That looks like a large mouth. That's, yeah, it does. He's pretty happy. He's all bronzed up. Oh, man. You bring him in, see? Oh. There you go. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> I might have to sit in on this. Yeah. You need a break? Look at this guy. Dude, yeah, look at this guy. Your frog? Yeah. No way. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of Dan's old patterns. Look at this thing. I'm just going to pick him up and show you real quick. Look at this, Joe. Wow. What a pretty fish. What do you think? 18, man? <laughs> Every bit of it. Welcome to the wild, wonderful West Virginia, huh? It just happened to try a frog pattern that's 100 years old, and the stars were aligned, but that's something I always remember. Guarantee you. It's time for Trout Unlimited's Release of the Week. Worked out pretty good. It worked. Well, <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a story out there about maybe like the old bull. Well, huh? that, that the old part's true. <laughs> <laughs>
But you, I mean, you just come in and take over, huh? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, Joe, I appreciate you coming, and I appreciate the mentorship. It's my pleasure. And Brian, please thank Debbie if we don't get to see her this evening for all the good food they took care of us. Um, we, we, we didn't make it over to Angler's Inn because they're, they're always full, right? That's I mean, right. And you got to call ahead if you want to come out there. And, and I know Clarion's good friends with, your, with, with you guys, and, and they took care of us, and we stayed comfortable. We ate well, Joe. And again, you come in and just close the show for us. So come back next week for more Fly Rod Chronicles. I'm just a fishing bum. If I don't have the gas, then I stick out my thumb. I've got to get there one way or another.